Hello again, everybody. Harry Boxer, the technical trader at thetechtrader.com. It's Tuesday, March 21st. Turnaround Tuesday. It wasn't a pretty day on Wall Street. Take a look at the beginning of the session. The markets gapped up on both indices, ran for about 10 minutes, and rolled over hard. Not only that, but after bouncing, we had wave, wave one, two, three, four, and the fifth wave finished it off right at the lows for the day, uh, or near it, and it wasn't a pretty sight. More importantly, looking at the Intermediate picture on the hourly charts. Let's take a look at them side by side. Here's the breakdown. Several trend lines broken, double bottom broken, and closed right there. I wouldn't be shocked to see the market gap down and test lower levels tomorrow at 5300-5305. Then the snapback. Or if it does rally it back tomorrow, it fails at 5360, maybe gets up to 70 or 80. I don't know. But the bottom line is, if this is a mess of head and shoulders, and it does hold here, we could expect something on the order of 20, 30 points up, maybe 50 even on the NDX. But the bottom line is, somewhere in that zone, it likely is to fail, in my opinion. With this kind of a thrust to the downside, that's my take. Uh, what's even worse is the S&P, which broke through lateral price support zone between 23.55 and 60 here, with a thrust down to 23.41.2 zone, at 42, and closed 44. Uh, net net, it wasn't pretty. If you take a look at the overall picture, the S and P 500 right now is uh, next. To, this is key support. Beyond that, we're looking at a move to test the 2320 area, maybe as low as 2300. But at some point along the line, in here, I think the market will snap back and test that zone, and maybe get you a one, two, three, four before a fifth wave takes you down further. That's my take on the indices. Let's look at some stocks first on the long side, and, and most of them are ultra shorts as well. Oil looks lower, and I keep being saying that for a while. The DWT, which pulled back for a couple of days, has moved right back up for four sessions today with a substantial move of $1.42 or 4.7%. Uh, now, the volume picked up to the best in four sessions. If it gets through, and this is what we'll be watching tomorrow, the recent spike high of 32.32, if taken out, should lead to mid-channel at 34.5 range, maybe even much more than that. The other, side of the, uh, the other one in that group is the SCO, which has been around a lot longer, and it's right now at the declining top sign. You can see the retest of that zone and that line there. If it gets through that area, we could be looking at, if, again, this is support around 38, resistance around 41 and a half range. Now, through that area, there's a big gap in here too. Right about that, where we can see a quick 43 to 45 range. Watch for that to happen as it's a breakout of a base with a pop, a pullback on lower volume. And now, if the oil does go lower, I wouldn't be shocked to see oil make it run at the double top there, 51. That's my intermediate target. My swing target is 44. Well, the um, FAZ had a, a big date to the upside. That means the market got hit. If that's the financial triple bear, financials rolled over. Let's look at the FAS. That was a nasty drop, folks. 320 or almost 7%, but the volume was the biggest of 2017 going back to mid-December. And never get good when you break support, shorter term trend lines, or even intermediate trend lines, and the 50-day moving average all in one fell swoop and closed at the low end of the range. I'd be shocked if we didn't get a follow through to test 40, and then maybe a bounce. Stay tuned, this could be a topping area. And the FAZ could very well make it up to 22, and then 25, those are my near-term targets. Big day for Pull Matrix. And I got European approval. The stock popped in the lousy market from 277 to 410 and closed at 388 up 110 or 40%. 23 million traded. Huge move for the stock. And after one, two, three wave corrective, following a massive move from 50 cents to $7, which is about a 12, 14 times your money in a month, it then took a little bit of a corrective mode, which it needed to. That's your support now to 25, but the near-term support has to be about three, two and three quarters. Nevertheless, it broke through the moving average of the climbing top signs today. If we get any follow-through, good or bad market, we may test the 450 to five and a quarter zone as early as tomorrow morning. SILC with a big day, strong report, and the stock exploded with a breakaway gap running 803 at 20.7%. That's massive. And half a million, 451,000 shares is big volume for that stock. The biggest volume on an update going back 
on an update going back a long time. Um, you can see how with the base breakout, the three wave corrective wedge broke out today. It took out resistance there and made it up to test the highs from t early 2015, two years ago, and before that mid-2014. That's an area here that may be problematical. I would say at this point we're looking for a run that tests the gap from 50, uh, 52, 52.20, and then beyond that looking at something in a 57.8 range, potentially. Well, some of the ETFs did great today on the short side. The SRTY, which is the Pro Shores Ultra Short Russell, had its best day in a long time, popping from 47 and a quarter to 52.10 and closing at 52.02. Pennies off the high up, 392 or 8%. You can see that the volume was the heaviest volume on an update since mid-January. And right now it's approaching. If right there you can see that the consolidation zone here, the resistance zone, I should say, at 53.4 zone, maybe tested as always tomorrow. If we get through that, then I'm looking for a test of 560 and a test of the declining top sign as well. But one day doesn't really make, let's see if there's a follow through. A good day for TDOC. Despite the market, maintain its momentum and made a new multi-month multi high. The highest level since, actually it's a two year, almost a two year high. The highest level reached since, oh, I would have to say September, October 2015. Where there's a double top around 24 and a half, three quarters which would may, may be tested tomorrow. If that's taken out, 28, eight and a half would be my next target up there. Great looking chart, good technicals, and 13.4 days to cover short position. There's one and two, and there's three, with a one, two, and maybe we get a three, four, five. This looks like it could be, if the market cooperates, in between 29 and then 35. Um, if we do get a market pullback and this thing get, gets back in this zone there, 21, 22, it could be a buy. Ultra short, triple bear TZA for a small cap area. Also with a big day today, trading 19.3 million. It's the biggest volume I've ever seen on an update for the stock coming off of a low. Fantastic session. 1786 to 1970, closed just five cents off the high of dollar forty six or eight percent on 19.3 million. As I said, it closed at the highest close, going all the way back to uh, early February. There's a line of resistance going through here, up around the 20, 45, 50 zone which I expect may be tested. We get through that, we're looking at 22. UVXY spiked. Look at the volume of this puppy. 61 million shares, never traded that in its history. Coming off of an all-time low, reached this morning at 1546, post-split. And you can see how, at this point, if this does recover, we should at least get it up to 20. We may see something in the low 20s, near 22 and a half, three. And lastly, one of our recent swing trades, V-Ray, had a fantastic day. You can see since a day and a half ago, the stock was trading at 560. Today got up to 730, a huge move in two, two and a half days. And it broke out across the double top, which is what I was looking for in a swing. Right now, my target remains eight, but the near term target was seven, seven and a quarter. We hit that today. Let's take a look at the shorts. There's a lot of shorts to cover that I wanna, want you to take a look at. Starting with AYI. And the wedge that it formed broke, no question today. That was down 298 or 1.44%. But what I'm looking for is a crack of this zone here. Maybe that being the line. And if that's taken out, completing a big wedge pattern, this could roll over and roll over hard. The first support would be about 194, but beyond that, there's a big room to drop all the way down to the high 160s. Keep an eye on this one because wave one, two, three, and four has been completed, but wave five may just be getting underway. AutoZone dropping 458, coming off of resistance at the declining top sign, the lateral price resistance right there. May have just completed a three-wave corrective rising wedge, but I need to see it follow through to the downside. If it does, it'll test 705 and then rip into the 675.85 zone. CATM, despite breaking out of this little flag to the upside, did not get through resistance, and today had a massive engulfing day. You can see an, a higher high, and the lower low and closing at the bottom of the range, it was down $1.47 to 3%. But I think the significance of it was that the stock may have completed wave two. This is one and two. If that's the case, this is your angle of descent. And we're going to be looking for something to drop first to test 41 two zone, and then all the way down to 36 seven zone. Dillard's getting killed. Here's a stock that traded at 100. 
44, 45. It's at almost 100 points down, 95 points down, and yet there's no bounce. It's actually making lower lows. Looking at the near term pattern, there's a zone of resistance at 37.8, maybe 41. So it's 38 to 41 zone I expect may get tested short term. Hollow General, another retailer, after consolidating in a range here that looked like a massive wedge, may very well roll over in a 1, 2, 3. If that does occur, look for a test of 67, followed by 60. Dine Equity broke that wedge we showed you three, four days ago. It's been down every day since and took out the recent lows. I think it's headed for 4244 zone. FPRX wave one is a five wave affair. Wave two is a three wave corrective. And wave three is sh sharply underway. But I think it gets down towards 31, 33 zone near term before it bounces. G3 Apparel broke support today. Dropped another 4%. And may be headed to as low as 19 and a half, 20 short term. Our robot got up to a shoulder length resistance here up and filled this gap. If you take a look at the low here, that was 60 and a half. Today's high, 60.81. Completely filled the gap, followed by the reversal bar. I'm looking for a follow through to the downside. If this takes out 58, I think we can see the stock pull, pull back to 56 and drop into the 52 range, if not much worse. Parsley Energy, one of the oil stocks that I'm liking as a bear, short, completed the top, came down, hit a little rising wedge, the larger wedge, so they dropped 87 cents, almost 3%, and that wedge fails. We're going to come down towards the mid-20s. Swing Trade Papa John's <clears throat> first broke down from this wedge, from the flag, and then broke down from that flag, and today goes underneath this line, which may mean we're headed to 68.9. Beyond that, I'm looking at 63. Nevertheless, it's in a rollover pattern. Ralph Lauren broke his bear flag today. May very well be headed sharply lower. I'm looking for 60, uh, 70 and a half, followed by 65. Swing short TPX also broke its wedge, it looks like. It's down only $1.11, 2.4%, but it looks to me like if it heads lower, and after completing a top pattern across here, this could very well get smacked. The first 36.7, then way down in the high 20s. Under Armour. Bear flag after bear wedge after, and this stock doesn't look good. It, 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 feels, it feels to me like it's going into the mid teens. Ubiquity, very similar to a couple of stocks on our board, uh, which had broken down hard and then had a rising flag, broke down today. Dropping 204, 4%. This thing looks like it's going to be heading for 46 and a half test, and then a breakdown towards 41. Urban Outfitters in a complete slide with heavy volume on the downside. Today broke some support. I would look to see the stock make a run at 20. And then if that breaks, you're in new low territory. Maybe all-time low territory. No, but it is multi-year territory. Wright Express looks like that completed a topping pattern by this breakdown. I would look for a test of this double bottom near 99 and then a breakdown towards 89. And finally is Yelp, which, which had a reversal engulfing bar today. After feeling right of resistance, Watch for a fall through the downside because if this follows through, the measured move on Yelp is 10 points from today's high, or 25. That would put it somewhere down in that zone. Don't be shocked if you see 25.6. And that's the long and short of it. It's not a pretty picture out there, folks. You've got to stay defensive in this time frame and um, make sure you have stops in, in protecting your positions. Number one rule, preservation of capital. Good night, everybody.